Hello and welcome back to Dragon Quest Wall Tutorials. I'm Koichi GZ, and in this video we are going to be doing a weapon breakdown and that's going to be a weapon breakdown of this weapon right here. So this is going to be the Crescent Moon which I did get recently with a recent uh, banner that is no longer available. It ended on the 10th but uh, yes I finally got this weapon. So this was actually featured in the Captain Aaron event that was last year in uh, let's see uh, February and March of last year. So um, this weapon is actually geared toward a superstar, but I'm going to be using it on my ranger. So it is a boomerang. So uh, I want to get into this weapon. Uh, you probably saw me use it a little bit in uh, my boggy Hokura battle against the uh, golden golem. So uh, with that said, I want to actually show you uh, the various abilities of this weapon. So finding an enemy near here. Okay, good. So we have a good set of enemies right here. So uh, my uh, ranger is going first, so it has the Crescent Moon on. So the first uh, ability I want to show is going to be Kamai Tachi. So that's actually going to be right here. So Kamai Tachi is going to be Whirlwind. And pretty much what it does, it costs 5 MP. And it does 180% physical technique damage to elementals. And 130% physical technique damage to all other enemies. So that's going to be like this. Okay, so now back to my ranger. So I'm going to be using the next ability. So that's going to be this one right here. So this is charm. So pretty much exactly like the name sound, it actually charms the enemy. So um, it does not have a 100% success rate. It sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. So uh, this case is going to cost 12 MP. So I'm going to try it on probably this slime is probably the easiest one to do. So let's see what happens here. So yes, uh, the uh, slime here uh, is actually is charmed, so you can see it with the little hearts there. So uh, now it, when it fights, it's actually going to attack the other enemies. So just like that, you saw the slime attack its own uh, enemy, so that's going to be uh, that little lizard on the right. Okay, now back to my ranger. The next ability that's found on the Crescent Moon is one that we've seen plenty of times before. That's going to be Skata, and that's going to cost uh, 11 MP. Uh, so pretty much like Skata, everyone you should know, uh, increases the defense of one ally by two ranks. So I'm going to do that on my own character. So what I'm going to actually do here is I'm going to heal with my Sage because uh, the next ability of the Ranger actually increases the uh, uh, HP recovery uh, effectiveness of uh, one ally. So I'm going to show you what it looks like with the regular heal. So around 292 as an average. Now with the ability I'm talking about is going to be uh, right here. So this is going to be the Siren no Sasayaki. So that's going to be Siren's Risper. So it costs 17 MP and what it does, it raises the recovery skill volume of one character. So I'm going to do that on my Sage since they are my healer. Okay, so now I'm back to my Sage. So I'm going to check to see uh, how well this healing does. Uh, it actually might just uh, heal up my armamentalist instead, but uh, something I did notice uh, when I was going through this, it said um, pretty much skill recovery um, effects. So uh, Behomata is actually a spell and not a skill, but I still want to see uh, what the effects are going to be, so let's check it out with Behomata. Okay, in this case, yes. So it was actually for skills and not actually spells. So uh, since Behomata is a spell, um, that actually wouldn't increase the effects. But uh, here I want to go over the last ability of the uh, Crescent Moon. So that's going to be right here. It's going to be Shio Sai no Serenade. 
So that's going to be the Sea Serenade. It costs 31 MP. And what this does, it does 160% Boggy Physical Technique Damage and 160 Physical Technique Damage to all enemies. And if Showtime is activated, all characters gain 20 HP. Though, since my character is not a uh, superstar, uh, there won't be any Showtime. But uh, here's what it looks like. And then taken down. So with that said, um, that's all the abilities of the Crescent Moon. And that's it for this battle. Okay, so uh, one last thing that I want to do... Um, so actually, before I do that, so, um, yeah, the Crescent Moon is actually, hmm, I don't see myself using this quite often, um, especially since I have, uh, better boggy weapons. Um, this is, does partial healing, so if it's pretty much a superstar is there to support, so if I have a Sage equipped with a staff or that has, a support, um, it's pretty much skill uh, healing, then that would actually be good. But otherwise, I probably don't see myself using this weapon uh, that often. But still an interesting uh, weapon, especially since it does have charm. It's one of the few weapons that actually does have it. So the Crescent Moon and then um, the recent summer event uh, where you get Puff Puff, that actually charms enemies too. So that could be interesting in a battle. But uh, what I want to do now is actually go over another soul in this video. So um, the soul that I'm going to go over is going to be the S grade uh, Golden Golem. So that can be found right here. So uh, it's going to be a yellow soul. Um, the actual stats are actually okay. They're not bad in terms of basic stats. In terms of the actual ability boost, it's going to give you plus 10% to weapon skill damage, plus 5% to physical technique skill damage, plus 5% to shadow weapon and uh, physical technique damage, uh, plus 10% damage to... Uh, inanimate object enemies then it's going to give you plus 10 percent to uh resistance to poison and plus 10 resistance to uh illusion so that's pretty much uh the details of the golden golem uh soul so i'm going to lock that in okay so uh that's pretty much it for this video so thank you for watching if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. If you would like to see more, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.